you know, I don't think anybody, I think for, for most say parents and students and for our, our staff was that we just needed that announcement because I think, you know, it, it really creates instability when you don't really know what is in some way the path forward, although that's all very flexible, but to have a sense of, okay, we're not opening schools before the end of the year because for school boards, we have to plan for that. So if all of a sudden they said, listen, we're going to open some schools and we're not going to open another and how are we going to get kids there? That takes a lot of planning because we're, you know, we're not in normal times and we're, you know, when we're looking down the road, we're not looking at schools as how we have normally functioned. So that takes a lot of people and getting people organized. So that provides us for focusing right now exactly what we've been doing and is, you know, um, you know, providing work for, for students and for their families, not wanting to stress them out, right? And I think that's really important. Um, we have families who were both, you know, say dual parents working from home and their kids say, you know, so we really need to, you know, ensure the health and well-being of our students within their families and our staff. So this helps us now plan going forward. We mean, obviously, our, you know, our board hasn't been sitting back kind of waiting from, from above. We've been actually, you know, have different areas of our board that have been actually looking at how we're going to go forward, you know, and particularly for September obviously. So, you know, it just gives us that, all, you know, a, you know, more of a runway. The other thing is too, and, and this is something, um, the Ontario Public School Board had a, we had a meeting on the weekend, not in person, it was a Zoom meeting. And one of the things that really came up is we have to be really conscious of our staff. And I particularly, I'm looking now at senior management staff who are doing all the planning and putting everything in place. They need a break. <laughs> So that was the other thing that needed to happen was, okay, this is the plan going forward so that now can, people can really put their efforts into that. We also have to realize that they have been working full tilt. And we're talking just not nine to five here. We're talking from early in the morning till late at night and on weekends. So they really, you know, we don't want to cause burnout. Well, it's really, you know, parents have been on board. In fact, parents were already on board on that for the majority um, because we, on a weekly basis, the Blue Water District School Board, we do a, a what we call a weekly question. We put out there, um, whether it's on Facebook, all sort, sort through different social media and on our webpage, and then we get responses and we, you know, so we've been actually ahead of that. <laughs> you know, what do you think about this? And what are your thoughts? Or what are, you know, um, well, one of the things that was really interesting, um, one of my principals told me, because I, I actually had a Zoom meeting with the Home and School Association of um, the uh, township school in Huron Heights. And the principal was asking students, they were on a meet, you know, you could say a meeting like this. And what was, you know, the things you missed most about being in school? And a, a very thoughtful little boy said, you know, I miss meal days. And it wasn't recess and it wasn't gym. And it, he missed, you know, the, the days that we do taco days and pizza days. And we realized that those are all really kind of in, important special days that once again, kids are, aren't getting. It's not taco day at home. So I, I just wanted to share that is that, you know, there's different things that kids, kids miss about school. And if there's anything, you know, when we have kids coming back to school in September, however that may look, I think we're going to have a, a lot of really excited students. Okay, so first of all, we have to work closely with public health, you know, our local public health. So they're the ones that actually get to say if schools are open or closed. And so every board um, across Ontario is working with their local health associations so that, that you know, the, the, the big person says whether a building is going to be open or not. They have they have that right. The same thing with the, the Minister of Education is working uh, with, with health at the very top saying, you know, where their buildings will be open. So first of all, what many students and parents have saying, can we come and get our stuff? <laughs> Whatever that stuff may be. I have some real concerns about what's in secondary school lockers at this point. 
It's been there since before the March break. And they, you know, so when you open those those lockers up, but yeah, you know, so I think one of them is that, you know, and if you think about back then, there's snow pants there, <laughs> you know, there's mitts and gloves and, and things like that. So one of them is we're actually trying to work with the public health and, you know, teachers were allowed to go in for a very short period of time just to pick up equipment, you know, to do at home, home uh, teaching. So one of the things is is you know how's that going to look you know so it's going to be very different difficult in elementary school you know say well joey's pants look like this because they have hooks right so we're really going to need to who knows it might be big long tables you know um you know outside who, who knows but then you know you have to be careful about people touching stuff i mean so we're going to have to first of all pl plan that out we don't know. We're, we're, you know, I think at the ministry level, um, we did have a meeting by um, teams this week, uh, this weekend, actually Zoom with the Minister of Education. One was with chairs by teleconference on Friday. And then on Saturday, we had an Ontario Public School Board meeting and he ca came on and we were uh, able to ask some questions um, of the Minister of Education. And just to let you know, one of the things we did say uh, to the minister, and, and this has to do with school boards and school board chairs, is that we would really like to have weekly meetings with the Minister of Education to really look at us as um, the, our, the, we're obviously partners in education. We're the ones on the, on you could say, on the ground um in moving moving forward um we um very much you know when we hear something at the same time as everybody else you know in terms of the media that's you know we're saying hey listen um you know we really need a lot better communication if you want this to to work coming for september no surprises and and you know the other thing is is that school boards right now are having to pl plan for our budget it's actually regulation. We have to have a budget presented and passed by the end of June. So we haven't received from the Ministry of Education our grants for student needs, which is the major, major component of, you know, us being able to budget. And, you know, so when they're late, you know, we're, we're you know, we're, we're at a really bad, you know, hard spot. The other thing has to do with staffing, you know, grants for student needs are all based on the, you could say, you know, number of students and to, to teachers and then additional kinds of staff that that would generate. If we don't have that information, you know, we have union contracts, you know, and if it goes beyond a certain time, then we can't do certain things. So I, I know I've kind of segued there, but those are all very important pieces right now to be planning for next year. And of course, we talked to Minister Lecce about, you know, a lot of our concerns, transportation, you know, um, and what that's going to, you know, look like. Um, we talked about the fact that if we're going to be doing, so obviously, social distancing in schools, we all, we can have the same number of students in a classroom. So we've talked about if we have, you know, boards with, who have additional spaces, can we open up those spaces, for example? And now, just to let you know, that creates a, a problem in this area. We don't have a lot of additional space. In fact, we are at over capacity. So that would be another piece. If we're over capacity, we're trying to create more space, then do we need more portables? So those all have to be ordered because they're, you know, so I'm just saying there's, there's reasons why we need to have, uh, you know, a weekly meeting with the Minister of Education um, so that, um, him and his team, the, you know, the ministry can do much better planning for on the ground so it works for all our, our students and our families and, of course, our staff. And, and, and I can tell you that I spoke up and asked a question of Minister Lecce um, that how this looks quite differently in rural, you know, rural and remote boards. Um, we're still really concerned with, um, rem, you know, what we call remote learning and teaching.
because not only do our students, you know, for many areas cannot uh, actually get online or it's too slow. So when we talk about synchronistic learning that creates a whole different problem in rural and remote remote boards. Um, the other thing is, even if we were to be able to get a device to a, a student family that was loaded, it wouldn't necessarily work, right? Because they just don't have the, the connection speed. So I think that, um, and same with our staff, we have staff that are in the same boat. So we've actually talked to them about, well, maybe it would be that um, that staff go back in or some staff go back in. So they're in a place where they can they can actually connect and be able to do better connections with their their students and, and engaging them in learning. You know, I think it's I think I have to tell you that our our families have absolutely been awesome. I, you know, I, I, what a what a difficult situation. And I, I especially think that it's for our young learners, because remember, when when our teachers or our additional staff are online with students are actually online with their their student in the and it might be a parent or an older sibling or you know or something because they of the navigation piece so you know they have really really stepped up and you know and we we've been very clear with families um that there's different ways you know they can you know, engage they can um hey listen we we don't really want to you know kind of you know, be online. We find that's very stressful or the time stressful. So they're sent work, not overloading them, of course, um, because they, you know, some, you know, there obviously there's, there's families with more than one child, you know, and um, so, you know, they can kind of get all the work and, you know, if you want, you can do that. And this is the way you might want to do it during, during the week. Um, and really it's well-being. You know, we're really trying, especially with, with younger students, is doing things that they can do with their family because we really don't want them to have you know, a whole bunch of screen time. Does that make sense? I mean, we just went through, we don't want kids on screens. <laughs> what do we do? Get on the screen. So, you know, doing activities and fun activities at home that, that you know, don't require screen time. So we've made, you know, so right at the very beginning, we really reached out to families. What kind, you know, what kinds of things do you need? And, and whether they're, um, you know, to say devices, you know, various devices and also how to use the device. That's the other other part in providing that kind of tech support. But the other thing was was other kinds of resources. And I can tell you our bus drivers have been phenomenal in dropping stuff, you know, because they know where our, all our, you know, kids and families live. And so dro dropping stuff off. So we were making sure that, um, you know, families were getting the things they need, they needed. The other thing we were also really concerned about, and this is for, um, you know, some of our families, it was, was food. So we'd had all these breakfast programs. So we basically sent that money out, you know, and, and deliver also that the distribution of the food went to food banks and things like that. And there was packages done up, you know, that goes to, you know, to families. So we wanted to, you know, so it wasn't just about the kind of learning things that learning, you know, tools like whether they're crayons and paper and, you know, um, you know, colored pencils or whatever, but it was also the other pe the other pieces because we wanted to make sure um, that, you know, our, our families were their well-being was was also being taken care of. I think that's more difficult. And I'm going to be be honest. So we, of course, we have our, um, our 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 special staff that work and they they were in contact with families right away, um, asking you know being able to be helpful and in in different things like that. I think that um, for us, you know, students with special needs, it's probably been a lot more difficult. And diff more difficult for for their families too, um, you know, mainly because it it was a big so socialization piece for students with 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 special needs, and so um, I think the isolation has really been difficult. The other thing was getting equipment to them, because if there was 
and that was the it, it was and it was was difficult you know like just say if specialized equipment was left in the school but staff weren't allowed to go into schools we had to get permission um and you know so then that it wasn't an easy thing hey meet the principal at the door and we'll give you you know those but we really tried to get that equipment to the, to the students and and of course our our ea staff has been working with with students with special needs they should be going absolutely to our, our website, the Blue Water District School Board. Um, and we have a whole section, you know, which is updated. I want to let you know the director each day does a, a note to everybody at the end of the day, including jokes, because we all need jokes. Um, and the other place, of course, is we have a Facebook page, which is updated regularly. That's also where you'll find the, the question of the week. And people can also make comments. So it's not like just a, you know, kind of one way direction, you know, that's, there's also give and take because we absolutely want to know. Um, and that, that is going up. And of course we also have, you know, Twitter, but I would really say that it's our webpage and in our Facebook page that is really being utilized. I just want to say that I thought, you know, like tonight, for example, I'm having a um, a, a parent council meeting uh, that is being put on by Elk and Market School and their parents. And then right after is their home and school and it's all being, you know, joined in. And so I think that they have really in, embraced you know, the technology, you know, say, you could say, you know, we've needed to embrace the technology. The school board, for example, I finally said, you know, over a week ago, hey, listen, I think we can go to regular types of meetings online. I think that the, the trustees and everybody has figured this out. Also, teams finally made it, made more people you could see, because that's a part that's a bit disconcerting. I was on a meeting with the Ontario Public School Board, and there was like 50 or 60 people online, and you had to kind of keep clicking to the next page, to the next page, so you don't get a, a sense of everybody. But it, but it, teams at least went up to like eight eight people, and of course everybody changes their background depending on their, their where they're being. I always put, usually put the beach, <laughs> you know, because we still can't go down to the beach. <laughs>